All right, so um, what I've got here is a text-based role-playing game application, uh, purely for fun, because I've been playing games for my whole life, so I wanted to make one. Um, it's very much based on, like, your older uh, text-based RPGs, mud, kind of a visual novel type idea. So, uh, or, I'm sorry, it, you visualized the novel. Anyway, um, so let's uh, register so we can create an account here. And so we will make that. We can log on in. And so here we have our uh, opening character select screen. And the idea here is that there's kind of three default characters that populate. So if someone doesn't want to make their own character, they don't have to. So we have these options here. You can see their name, their class, and then their origin. Uh, right now, class and origin are just kind of cosmetic. That'll be reflected in some things as we go through. But uh, let's make our own character. So. Let's go ahead. I didn't see any. So let's make an elf archer. And uh, let's give him a cool and original name. That's uh, never heard anything of that before. So we'll create the character. And then when we go to our home screen, we can see that the new character that we've made is right there. And because this is our character we can make, uh, we do have the power to delete and get rid of that if we decide we don't want to play with that character anymore. So I'll select that character. And then we have the ability to take them through an adventure. So if we click here, we'll see uh, our level selection. Right now, we only have one level for our demonstration purposes. And if we click on that, we can see there's some text. It does know who we are and the different attributes that we chose. And it kind of describes where we are and what we're doing. We also have the ability to view our stats. So we'll see strength and dexterity and all that. This is our base stats. This is anything we get from items. And then over here, we can see in our inventory, we right now have some leather armor. We can look and see that it gives us a uh, five to our toughness. So if we equip that and we go back to our stats, there it is. So let's return to our adventure and let's uh, head on, enter the armory. And we can see we've got a sword and a shield here that we found. So we'll pick both of these up. If we go to our inventory, there they are. And uh, we certainly wanna have some weapons on, so let's get those going. And then we can return right back to our adventure and proceed to the crossroads. Uh, here we have an opportunity for a choice for our character. They can either take the left path or the right path. And uh, for this demo, let's go uh, down the left way and see what happens. And so what we found here is an encounter with an orc marauder. Um, we can see all of the enemy stats here. And then we, as the player, have the opportunity to choose if we want to go more aggressive or more defensive. If we choose an aggressive attack, we get a boost to the damage we do. Defensive, uh, we will reduce the damage that we take. So let's just go aggressive and see how it goes. All right, we're not doing so good, but we did manage to get him right there with a big hit at the end. Uh, and we will proceed on our journey. And there we go, we found a new weapon. We'll pick that up. And then if we go to our inventory, I'm gonna put on my new weapon, but I can't because both my hands are already full. So if I want to put that on, I need to take these off first, and then I can freely equip my new two-handed weapon, which we can see is noted as a two-handed. So if I wanted to have this and a shield, can't do that either. So kind of some strategy, kind of some decision-making based on how you want to build, what you want to carry, and things of that nature. So we'll return to our adventure, we'll proceed. And here we have another encounter with a goblin. And uh, so we'll just go ahead and hit them. And you can, as you play, you know, you'll see what's going on, who's dealing damage to who, who's hitting, who's missing. So this time he reacted first. We didn't do anything, but he did get us. So we'll just take some swings at it and we beat him. And then we get here to our reward screen. We've gone through the entire level. Congratulations. And uh, we can return to our selection. And then let's say, for example, that, you know, maybe it didn't go so good. We don't want to play this character anymore. We can delete it if we would like. And there he goes. And then uh, if anyone plays and they're curious for what exactly goes on behind the scenes with the combat system, you can always click here. And it does give a full explanation. I won't give everybody all those details right here and now, but it is there if anyone uh, is interested. And so that kind of concludes my app and what it offers. Um, does anybody have any questions? Thank <laughs> you.
what inspired your app? Um, so I wanted to do something fun and I really enjoy playing games. I like video games. I enjoy, um, you know, tabletop games, video games. And so I just wanted to take some things and put it all together. You know, I really enjoy, uh, old fantasy and all that. So I want to do something along those lines and something that maybe after new force, I'll keep developing and uh, keep playing with as we go. Hello, my name is Dan Miller, and uh, I want for my capstone, I wanted to make kind of like a template that I could use for a lot of my different hobbies. I like to draw digital comics, digital paintings. Uh, I'm getting into 3D printing and sculpting and a lot of other stuff with 3D. I'm also getting into animation. And um, I've and for a long time, I've been using third party platforms like Patreon and Gumroad, but I'm getting kind of burned out on third party platforms and having to like fight with algorithms. And I've always just kind of felt it would be better if I could just build my own website, have my own store, have my own blog, and not have to go through a third party platform. So I decided to for my capstone to make kind of like a template that I could use to build just about any kind of website I wanted. And the focus for this capstone was an online store. So here we are at the front page, which is a login page. And I'm going to first show you the admin view. So we're going to log in an admin from the database. And here's the welcome page. And we click on store. And here we have an admin view, which gives you CRUD capabilities. Like we have the option to easily create or add a new product. And we have here, we click on um, this right here and we can see the details and we can edit this product and we can delete it. So let's just kind of as a test, let's create a product. And we'll call this, uh, Webtoon Space Beast, Volume 1. Let's just imagine we wrote a big epic webtoon about a space beast, and this is the first volume. And we're going to set the price to, oh, $5. We're going to give it a type, submit. And there's our webtoon, Space Beast. So here we have up here another product we made art poster so let's say this one's not selling too good we want to edit it. it we have it listed for 12 let's say we want to sell it for cheaper to see if it'll sell better so we just change the price to six and there it is its price has been changed let's say that this art poster is six years old and we're way better than what we were when we first made it and it doesn't represent our best work anymore so we have to get rid of it so we just hit delete product and there it goes so now i'd like to show you just kind of a user or a customer view We're going to log in a user from the database. We're going to go to the store. And here's our Space Beast webtoon, but the user doesn't have the option to add a product. And if he goes to the details, he can, just has the option to add to the order. He can't edit it. He can't delete it. And this was the big thing I wanted to hit on in my capstone was just being able to make a store and have an admin view and a user view so that it would be easy for me to add any kind of product I wanted to my store. Um, and that concludes my demo, my presentation, and I'd like to everyone. My name is Jake Doris and my app is called Loose Leaf. And Loose Leaf was made to be a minimalist app for note taking and organizing writing projects. So since we're already logged in here, 
uh, we'll go ahead and dive in by clicking the leaf logo. And when clicking that, you're taken immediately to the quick notes page. Uh, quick note is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a way to take a fast note on the fly. Uh, and this is where all my previously created quick notes live. So let's go ahead and say I'm at the campground, uh, but I'm not at the office and I get a phone call. John West wants to make a reservation for Friday. All right, so I would just jump in, take a quick note. All right, there's the title and then content. We'll say, uh, guys, phone number there and we'll put them in cabin six. When we click submit, we're taken back to our quick notes list. And if you scroll down here, you can see our newly created quick note. All right, so John West calls me two minutes later and says he's got a blown out tire on the trailer and he can't make it out to the campground Friday. Uh, can he change it to Saturday? And since we're just taking notes anyways, we'll go ahead and edit the note. Change Friday to Saturday. And when we submit and scroll back down to our note, we can see that change reflected right here in the title. Now let's say John calls back a third time and he has to cancel the reservation. There's a work emergency. No problem, John. What we'll do is we'll go to our note here click delete, we're taken to our confirmation page where we can confirm delete. And it's like the note never happened. It's gone. So I have a notebooks link here up at the top of my nav bar, but in this version of Loose Leaf, it's not yet functioning. Uh, in version two of the app though, uh, this link right here will take you to a list of user created notebooks whether it's recipes, uh, workout routines, song ideas, whatever you could think up, and you'll be able to select those individual notebooks and take notes uh, and do writing uh, specifically within that notebook for a more organized writing experience. Uh, but this is my app as of today, and it may not be anything to write home about just yet, but I've had a lot of fun making it, and I look forward to adding to it over time here. I appreciate your all's time. Uh, and if there are any questions, I'm open. Thank you. What part did you have the most fun with when creating this? The more challenging something is, I think the more fun it is when I actually get it figured out. Um, so the fun is in the successes, I think, but also I'm a design guy. So I like little stuff like this. Ready? Bam. Bam. So little effects like that, um, you know, color scheme and stuff. Uh, but much work to be done for sure. All right, thank you so much, Jacob. Well done. I'm a very avid gym goer. I go basically every day. And um, one of the things that I really noticed is especially like starting out in the gym, if you've never been, you kind of don't really know where to start. You don't really know like what to do. Or I'll also see people who have like notebooks and stuff that are writing down either what they're doing or what they plan on doing. So this is just kind of an app that'll help you be able to track your workouts, but also uh, for new for new people or if they just need like a quick workout, they can just generate a random full body quick workout that they can just hit really fast. So let's just jump right into the to the full body workout. We'll kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. So when we click the full body workout. Obviously, it gave us an empty one. It was This is a test one. That's great because it'll help show off my app a little bit better. So what it'll do is it'll generate from our workout list here um, a whole set of workouts for each, one workout for each um, muscle group. But I, as we see here, I don't want this one because it doesn't have anything in it. So whenever we hit the update button, it will refresh and it will go ahead and put in a fresh new set of workouts to do. 
However, let's say we don't want to choose any of, of any of those we want to make our own. So we can go ahead and just make our own here. So fix that. We'll just do lat pull. Pull down. Bicep. We'll just do regular curls. Chest. We'll just do um, regular bench press. Shoulders, let's do some, <clears throat> let's just do some dumbbell raises. The tricep, we'll just do some tricep extensions, do cable. Legs, let's just do squats. And abs, let's just do some regular crunches. So whenever we hit create, it'll refresh the page. And then we'll go to our workout list. And we can see that it'll put it down here at the very bottom of our workout list. That will then be able to be added in back into our full body workout. But I see here we have some like before, that we need to get rid of. Easy as just clicking this delete button right here. It just automatically delete any of the ones that we don't want in here. And that is basically the extent of my app. Does anybody have... Hi, welcome to my app, Community Connect. Community Connect connects people to local fundraisers and community events in their area. This makes it easier for people to connect with their community, make new friends, and support causes that they care about. The landing page is the event list. Even when you're not logged in, you can see the list of events. You can click on an event to see the details, such as the date, time, location, and other details. If you click on any of these buttons, you'll be prompted to log in. You can register as a new member. For this demo, I'll log in as an existing user so that I can show you the volunteer list. You can filter the event by search term. City. So this event is in Huntington State, let's say Florida. This event is in Florida. And since my user is in Huntington, West Virginia, if I check nearby events, we'll only see events in Huntington, West Virginia. We can pick an event let's say community art project, and we can sign up for the event. If we check our notification, we are signed up to volunteer for a community art project. We can also contact the organizer. And if we check our notification again, we've contacted the organizer. We can also organize our own event. We can pick a picture from our computer. Say it's tomorrow.
at our event and here it is we can edit our event let's see we want to make it saturday and now it's for saturday you can also delete our event and it's gone from upcoming events if you look at my profile you can do the same for our profile page two we can edit our profile such as our contact information you can also delete it we can look at events that we've organized events that we're volunteering in and past events if they get bumped out of upcoming event and we're the organizer or we volunteered in the event they will appear here let's look at events that we organized we can view the volunteer list and we have their contact information such as email phone number in case we need to contact our volunteers we can also view contact forms and these are people that contacted us and we can respond to the inquiry via email and phone number and that's it this is my app to raise awareness for various social causes and encourage community involvement by promoting local volunteering opportunities thank you be able to do um, conditional rendering um, and kind of mess around with that. So without further ado, I want to get started with uh, register. So here we can register a user and we're going to go with Monica. And do a display name and an email. And set a password here. I'm going to go ahead and register that user. So we get a nice greeting on the home screen here. And from here, um, Monica has a few, a couple of um, items. So, so this application in general is going to be kind of a multi-purpose application where people can use it for um, recipes, where they can use it for storage in their garage. Um, companies would be able to use it for their items um, to be able to transfer stock and things like that in the future. Um, but for now, Monica is going to use it to kind of try to finally start organizing her um, junk closet. So she's going to add a new container here called Hidden Junk Closet. And the description here is going to be don't tell Chandler. So we're going to add that new container. As, as you can see, the new container now exists in the space. And she's going to add another one just for later called kitchen cabinets. And in the description here, she's going to add that as well. So now she has a couple of containers she's ready to, to kind of get some items organized in. So first she's gonna to wanna to make some tags because she already knows you know, there's gonna be a couple of items um, to kind of be able to situate those and sort them out. Um, she knows kind of what types of items she has in the closet, but she's not sure how many or what type. So we're gonna add some quick tags here called furniture. I'm gonna submit that. And we're gonna add another tag, electronics. And one more which is going to be art. And another, which is going to be called other, kind of to catch all. She's not sure what where it came from, what it is. And she decides she's going to edit this art one because she's not sure what she has in her closet is actually art. So she's just going to add a question mark to that. And we'll see why later. Now for, now she has some tags set up. She's going to go to items here and from here, she's going to actually want to use her mobile application. And for just a second here, I'm going to refresh this just so we have her credentials locked in there. So from here, she has some items, and she's going to want to quick add some items here. 
And this is going to be her mobile view. She pulls out her phone. She goes to her closet. She, you know, doesn't have to lug around a computer. So here we have an item name, which is going to be, I'm going to add a few items. Bear with me. This is a kind of a lengthy process here. So we're going to have broken lamp. And with these, as of right now, the item description is required. And this is going to be a furniture item. So we're going to add that item. And as you can see, it's here. Now we have the tag on the bottom called furniture. I want to add another item, VCR. And I'm never using this thing again. Add in another item. And this is for the sake of her container. And just a couple of more items here. And this is the ever, ever uh, important unsorted photographs. And uh, her description, I'll sort them eventually. And this is going to be the other category. And the final item I'm going to add is going to be Phoebe's Gladys Art. And uh, she needs to make a note to herself really quick to hang this back up today. And that's why we have a question mark of art. So now that we have some items that are in her closet, she's going to go ahead and switch to her containers. And this is her hidden junk closet. We're going to click on the details here. And we're going to go ahead and click add them. As you can see, there's a modal that pops up. And she has her list of items she can add. She's going to add each item. And it's going to uh, give you a confirmation that those items were added. You can also remove those items pretty quickly. So we're going to just go ahead and quickly add each item. And now she has every single item added. And now when you go back to containers, you now see that there is a... Uh, let me go back here. You can now see that they have container the coloration is different because it, it signifies that there are items in that container it gives you a total amount of items and any tag that's associated with the items inside is going to appear on this uh, uh, overview once and if you go back to items you'll now see that these items are green green lit and have a little container icon on the corner uh, signifying that they are indeed in a container and let's say that she finally gets to cleaning everything out. So she's going to go in back into um, containers. She is going to go ahead and delete this entire container. Because now she's going to make a new one called clean closet. She's going to remove everything. Once she confirms that, the container is now gone. And if you go back to items, the items are still there. She still has them, but they are just now grayed out. And... That concludes my presentation. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, here's my application. I'm calling it prepare. I did it based off the thought process of preppers. Um, I'm not going to say that I am a full blown prepper per se, but I always like to be prepared. Uh, if you see me, you'll normally see me in my car and I'm always running between houses. So I like to have certain items with me at all times. So I had the thought process of that going into this. Whenever you log in, got your home screen. We signed in as little John, John Doe. And you've got your items. Your items have different categories and you can go through and add new items. They can be just about anything because your lists or kits, depending on how you set this up or how you want to utilize it, can be used for many different things. Uh, I just got a ratchet set to put it in my car because I needed several different things and I didn't have anything on me. Say, I had my emergency blanket and I put it in clothing. Well, I don't want it in clothing anymore. I want it in tools and gear. I put flour in there for my food supplies. Well, food supplies isn't, for flour is not something that you can use 
on a consistent basis. And there's also many different ways you have to be careful whenever you store flour as is a perishable object. So I don't really want to keep that or have to deal with it consistently. Then you've got your different categories that you can go through and add items to. Say, for whatever reason, you no longer have a pet. Or maybe you don't want to store your pet supplies in a certain thing. You can go through and delete that as well. But all this carries down to your list. Now with the list, um, you've got your list locations and your list last updated. So if you've got an emergency kit and you went through and made sure that everything was okay. If you've got all the blankets or if your first aid kit or if you had any food in there, you can go through and change the date on that as well. Or if you've got your emergency kit at your house, but you wanted it in your car, if you're in your car more from day to day basis, you can change that here. You can also go through and add items to your kit. So say, You've got a family of four, you want to have four water filters or more, depending on what type of water filters you use. You've got your backpack to keep everything in, a couple emergency blankets. You can change the amount of items that are in there or say you no longer think that a multi-tool will work. You've got something else. You can go through and delete an item and it carries it down into your list that you can add back in at any time. That way you're not having multiple of the same thing whenever you can just go through and change the amount of items that are in that kit or list. Ah, but say I've got an emergency kit, I've got a car kit. Well, maybe I no longer need this home kit anymore just because I've moved things around or maybe I've got something a little different. You can just go through and delete the whole list, but it doesn't delete any of the items it just deletes that list and you can use this not just for emergencies you can also use it if you're trying to plan a trip if you want to do your packing if you've got christmas supplies that you want to keep in your closet but you want to list it out that way you can be like okay i used this last year i want to go through and have different items or maybe I want to make sure that it's still in the closet and say you checked it last year you just go ahead and change the date that you put on it and if you go in there and go oh these items are no longer in here or it moved around say you want to move it from your closet to the garage because you needed more room because you love Christmas and the holidays and so you need more room for your Christmas supplies. Uh, I had the thought process of this more for the emergency side just because of everything that's gone on. I had the same thought process as Fiona just more so for myself and my family. Um, a lot of things have happened especially in West Virginia and in the surrounding states. So I wanted to make sure that I had the supplies for those situations. Like if I'm in my car all the time, I want to make sure that I have items in case of emergencies. Or if I'm at home, I live in flood zone. So if I get cut off from the area, it's a little bit more difficult or make sure my house is elevated just to get out of the area in cases of emergencies. So that was my thought process going into my app. Uh, this is my app in its entirety. If anybody has any questions, please feel free. Hi everyone, this is my app, Creative View. This is a hobby app that I created for getting and giving hobby recommendations. Um, I'm a big, I'm really big into hobbies. I have probably 20 of them, but some people like my husband don't have any and they have a hard time finding something that they're interested in resources. So I wanted to make this for those kinds of people. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. This is our homepage. So we can see, we go to all hobbies. We have a library here with hobbies that people 
have recommended. These ones up here were put on by other users, so I can't edit or delete those, but these ones down here were put on by this profile, so I am able to edit or delete them. Um, if we go back to home, we can add a hobby. So I'm going to go ahead and add gardening. And these are posted in chronological order. So mine's going to be all the way at the bottom here. So you can see we have our username is here, um, the title, the description, and the photo. So if we want, maybe we changed our mind and we don't like gardening anymore and change this. Gardening sucks. So you can see that's been updated if we go back. Now it says gardening sucks. Or if we just want to delete it all together, we can hit delete, refresh the page, and it is gone. So that's about the extent of my app because I wanted to keep it simple. But one thing I do want to add in the future is being able to click on a hobby that you like and having a chat where you can ask questions. Um, I think that would be really neat. What's up, y'all? Um, my name is Jessica Sturgill. I'm from Mingo County, West Virginia. And if something weird happens, my cat is currently trying to crawl onto my keyboard. I'm trying to push her away. Um, so she was good all morning. I thought I would be safe for my presentation, but I guess not. <laughs> um, um, so the app that I'm going to be showing y'all today is called Figment. It is a um, there's a color palette and project management app. And um, essentially it um, it takes user inputs uh, for selecting a color and automatically generates common color harmonies based on that input. And users can build custom color palettes um, based on the color harmonies that have been suggested. And that's useful for like creative projects. Um, so, Let's get started. We are going to be logging in as Ms. Mudang. And from our Explore page, um, you can select color input over here. And as you can see on the right, uh, the color harmonies get suggested automatically. And for the purpose of the demo, we're going to build a new palette together. So now that we've added um, these two swatches to a color palette, we can view them in the My, pa My Palettes page. As you can see, the demo palette is here. Uh, we can rename our palette here if we want to. And we can also add it to a profile showcase. Um, but before we view that, I'm going to go ahead and click on the details uh, to give extra information on um, the swatches in the palette. You can access the hex and RGB values for each color. So you might be wondering, what do I do with all of these colors? If you click on the Mod Projects uh, page, um, as you can see, we have one existing project, but we're going to make one together for the purpose of the demo. Within our project, um, we can take notes on whatever we're working on. Like we need to build more color palettes. And we can associate color palettes with our project. And we also have another box to um, choose to display our project in our profile showcase. So as you can see, that populates um, as it should. And when we visit our profile, 
we have the number of projects that we've created, the number of palettes we've created, you have a user bio, uh, this information can be updated as well. Under our palettes showcase, we have the palettes that we added, that we chose to make public, and the same for the projects that we chose to make public. And if we decide that we don't want a palette or a project anymore, we can delete them here and they'll no longer show up in any of those areas. Um, I'm ready to answer questions for anybody that I All right, hey everyone, appreciate you all for being here. I'm LJ and what you're looking at now is the home page of my project Block Lingo. And what this is, this is a browser word puzzle game that has a little bit of a twist to it. So you're actually gonna be able to connect your crypto wallet and earn cryptocurrency as you play and solve puzzles. So crypto, is kind of the thing that got me into coding back in 2020. And I've done some other crypto personal projects in the past. So I figured why not do another one? And I do wanna say the crypto stuff is optional. If you don't have a wallet or just don't care, you can just play the games as usual. And uh, like I said, you're looking at the home page here and in order to speed this up, I'm already signed into to an account up here. As you can see my username up there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and connect my crypto wallet. And this modal is gonna come up here. If you don't have a wallet and you want one, this does have some utility in here where the user could install a Google Chrome wallet extension. This list on the left, these are gonna be all of the wallets that will currently work with the app right now. And for example, if your wallet is on your phone, you can choose this wallet connect and that's gonna give you a QR code to, to scan and that will connect you to the blockchain network and to the application. But for the demo here, I'm gonna use this one at the top called MetaMask, which is a Google Chrome extension, pretty popular one. So I'm gonna click that and that is gonna open this window here in my wallet. And this is gonna connect us to a testnet blockchain. And what that means is it is a real blockchain but the cryptocurrency tokens here aren't gonna have any value. So you don't have to worry about anything like that. And you're not gonna see my life savings or anything like that in this wallet. And also your wallet, that is what is gonna store your cryptocurrency. And it also serves as a unique identifier on the blockchain. And you can see my wallet address up here shortened. And that's showing that I am my wallet is connected. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and click play. And this is gonna load us up a puzzle to play. And a puzzle consists of two stages. The first stage is similar to connections and the second stage is similar to contexto. And you're looking at the first stage now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this toolbar here and that's gonna turn on our audio. Hopefully you all can hear that. Okay. And the, the goal of this first stage is you wanna group four groups of four similar words. So words that are related to each other. You have four mistakes down here. So if you get four incorrect guesses, the game's over and it's gonna give you a different puzzle to try. And let me just go ahead and show you the controls here. So you can select, you can deselect one at a time. You can deselect all and you can also shuffle right there. That shuffle, sometimes you'll get lucky and some of the correct answers will kind of line up. And if I get one wrong, you're gonna see that that mistake disappeared down there. But in order to move this demo along, I'm gonna do my best to solve this one here. And this is an easier one because I do need to be able to play my own game. Probably wouldn't look very good if I didn't. So this first one here is gonna be AFO linebacker NFL and linemen. These are going to be football terms. And then we have downtown, boulevard, subway, and avenue. And you can see for the ones that I'm getting the correct, the board gets a little bit shorter. It could potentially get a little bit easier. 
I believe this one, this is going to be words for garbage or things that transport garbage. And then from there, we've completed this first stage. And so what's going to happen is it's going to move us on to the second stage of the puzzle. And right here, it's just reiterating the correct answers uh, for that first stage. But I'm going to click next stage here, move on to that second stage. And this is my favorite part of this. So the goal in this stage is to guess the secret word. And as you can see here, for each guess that we type, it's going to give the word a score, and that score is going to tell us how close or how far we are from the secret word. And for each word that I type right here, it's pretty cool. This uses a machine learning model to detect cosine similarity. So it just compares the secret word with the guest word, calculates the cosine similarity, and then that's going to allow us to give the score right here. And You'll see the score bar right now, we're very far away. So the score is gonna range from one being a correct answer all the way to about 90,000. So these right here are terrible, we're pretty far. And this is where I'm gonna ask you all to help me if I can pull up the chat here. And I do wanna say this, we're not gonna take all day with this. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this word right here out of the way because this was the answer I used in the first demo a week ago. But as you can see, bacon isn't the secret word, but that's going to be a little bit closer. So we're on the right track there. As you can see, it's got a low score of 2,000. And you can see that score bar climbing. So let's type some other guesses in here and let's see if we can guess it. So if you notice here, these are all food related words and these are all orange answers right here, all in the 2000s. And I do wanna say you need to guess nouns. So we already have this guess railroad. If I try railroads, it's gonna error out. And the same thing for verbs. So a couple um, food guesses real quick and then we'll move on. <laughs> and okay, let's try ice cream. Lettuce. And someone got it right away. So it actually is going to be pizza. And as you can see, these are possibly things that could go on pizza. And so this is the secret word. And when I enter this, that's going to complete our full puzzle. We completed stage one, and now we're going to complete stage two. <laughs> And that takes us to the end of the puzzle here. And as you can see, it's gonna show us that we made one mistake. We had 13 guesses. And you're also gonna see this rewards possible. And because I have my crypto wallet connected, I see that. And this five lingo, what that is, that is an ERC20 cryptocurrency that I deployed to work with this. And that is what we're gonna get paid since my crypto wallet is connected. And as you can see up here right now, my balance is 395. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click this claim rewards button and this is gonna open a prompt in my wallet. And the first prompt that comes up is a signature request. And basically what this does, it, it proves that I own the private keys of this wallet. So after I confirm this, another prompt is gonna come up in my wallet and that is gonna be the one to confirm the transaction. And I wanna say with that, there's always gonna be a very small chance that something external on the blockchain fails. And if so, you're gonna see my error handling for the rare case that that does happen. Otherwise, you're gonna see a successful transaction and you're gonna see my lingo balance increase. So we're getting paid for completing our puzzle here. And I'm gonna go ahead and confirm the transaction. And as you can see, pretty quickly, our blockchain transaction went through. And if I wanna quickly look at the details of that, I can see, I can click see transaction. And that is gonna take us to a block explorer. And that is where our transaction 
is going to live right here forever in public record. And you can see everything that happened. We called the win puzzle function. And it ultimately ended in five block lingo tokens being rewarded to us. So now returning back to the app from here, you can see that my balance is now going to be 400. And I can confirm that in my wallet here in the extension, 400 lingo tokens there. And then from here, you can play again. And that's going to give us a completely new puzzle that we haven't seen before to play if we want to. And then one more thing to show you here, because um, those of you that have seen this before, I don't think you got to see this. So this is what a profile page would look like. And you see these achievements here. So basically, it just tracks achievements as you play the game. And you can hover over these achievements to see what action you performed that gave you that achievement. Right here, I earned 100 points. I made my claim for Lingo tokens. And this context expert, you can see that I found the secret word in less than 10 guesses. And I think that's going to be it. I just want to say I appreciate you all. I've worked on a lot of personal projects over the years, and it's rare that um, anyone gets to see the result of those. So I really appreciate the opportunity. And um, I've gotten a lot better over the last six months being here. So really appreciate everyone. screen. So I am Macy and I'd like to rec uh, welcome you to the Entertainment Chronicles. It is an app that organizes different versions of media like books, TV shows, movies into collections uh, for future binge watching purposes. Um, and I really wanted this app to organize things in chronological order because I that's how I like to consume my media. So if we go to collections, we can see all the collections that I have created so far. Um, you can add a new collection, view those collections, edit and delete them. Uh, so let's take a look at a book collection. So we got the Blood, Flesh, Fire and Ash collection. Um, you start with the Flesh and Fire series. All those books are in order. And then you have the Blood and Ash series. And then we can also take a look at the Star Wars collection that has movies, and then the Clone Wars TV show down to the episodes in chronological order that I've started to build. But for this demo, let's create a new collection for a book series I am wanting to start. So Broken Kingdoms collection. Add that directs you to add a series. So we'll select that collection I just made. And then we got the Broken Kingdoms. And that is the first thing in this collection. Then that goes to the collection view page and we can add a book. Um, when you add something to the series, you can select either book, TV show, or movie um, and the form changes accordingly. But like I said, we're gonna add a book to the Broken Kingdoms. It is Curse, if I could spell, uh, Shadows, again, and Thorns. Author is L.J. Andrews. That's the first book. And then we can add it. And we see that we've added that book. And then we go back to that series. Um, we can also edit the title. Let's see, it's actually LJ Andrews. All right, we can update that. And then let's say I actually don't want to finish this collection. I didn't like the book, whatever. We can go ahead and delete this whole collection. And then it's not there. And that is the Entertainment Chronicles.
Hi, everyone. I'm Iris Lee coming to you from Fayetteville, and this is my full stack capstone. So this is um, Wiki Wander. It's inspired by this game called the Wiki Game. Um, it is a game that I used to play a lot when I was in college, and the basic premise of it is that you start at one Wikipedia article, and then the goal is to reach um, another article that they give you. And so here we go. So this game, we're starting with pizza and we're trying to get to Chile. So when I hit start game, it'll pull up the Wikipedia page for pizza. And we are gonna try to make our way to Chile. So we can go to Italy. So now here we're at the page for Italy. Um, and then from there, we can go to Europe. And from Europe, let's go to the Northern Hemisphere. And then let's see what's here. Ooh, the Americas. Let's just go to South America. And from there, we made a chichili. This very excited woman is happy for you. And if we go to the profile on the nav bar, you can see the game history. This is the game that we had just played. Rope today from pizza to chili. It took us five different steps. And our game was completed. So for example, if we went back, this will always say pizza, pizza to chili because we're on the demo branch. Uh, and if we start a new game and we don't actually complete the game, um, it'll still pop up on your game history saying that you hadn't made it. And if you want to wipe that from your records, you are more than welcome to. And there it goes. So your losses never happened. <laughs> and you can see these are a, um, a couple examples of other um, games that have happened. And we can also log out. We can register as a new user just with first name, last name, a display name, and an email. Or we can go back to our test user. And that is Wikiwander. Um, All right, so I am Andrew. Um, the uh, capstone project that I'm presenting today is, um, I called it No Skips. It is essentially um, serves the function of something similar to like Letterboxd, um, which is for movies, but this is instead for music albums. Um, so you can essentially just keep track and um, keep in memory um, different things you listen to and then, you know, maybe reference in the future and go back and give it another listen, um, maybe change your rating, things like that. Um, so you have the option to log in and register right here. Um, but for the sake of time, I will go ahead and just um, log into mine here. All right. So once you are in here, um, you are presented with all of your entries that you have submitted um, in the past with both edit and delete features as well. Um, right below um, the, the entry right here. Um, so if we wanted to go ahead and just add one, um, we can do that here. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll just do right there. And um, so this this little sort of um, entry sort of panel here is, is something that was giving me issues. So for the sake of the demonstration, I'm just going to do this here. This is from 1982. And um, in future versions of this project as well, um, you're going to have the option to add the um, album art as well that will present on your main page as well. But for now, we'll just do this. And um, let's say I give that a four and you'll be will be able to add notes as well, like such as like favorite song, 
Oops, things like that. Um, so you can do that. And then it adds down here. I have it set up so that it adds it um, in um, alphabetical order at the moment. Um, however, in future versions, I would like to do something where maybe it's entry date, um, something like that. So like th something you listened to more re uh, recently would be towards the top. Um, so I noticed that I actually made a um, made an error on this one. I can't get this thing out of the way. Um, so I'll go ahead and I'll edit it real quick just to get this just to get this fixed. All right, and then we can save and you can see it was um, it was fixed right here. Um, yeah, and then there's also the delete functionality as well. So that just gets rid of it. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, ideally, I would have liked to had the image here as well, as long as with notes and release date, things like that. That's definitely going to be coming in the future. Um, but essentially, that's that's pretty much my project, what I have right now. I think it serves as a good sort of um, way to keep track of what you've listened to, things that you really thoroughly enjoyed. Um, cause one, one thing that, um, worries me or I get nervous about is like my Apple music account or whatever account you use just being shut down or losing access to it. And you, you may forget stuff that you really enjoyed. So that's kind of was a little bit of an inspiration that went into kind of why I built this. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's, um, it's nothing too crazy. It's pretty simple, but, um, yeah, it gets the job done for kind of what I wanted to get out of it. Um. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So if anyone has any questions, hopefully I can. Next up, Will. All right, what's up, guys? What's up? You ready? I am ready. Let's do it. Y'all see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, guys, welcome to Field Scout. Um, this project comes from uh, my greenhouse days where I used to grow on a whole scale. Um, this was actually a photo I took uh, to give you an idea of, of kind of what it looks like. Um, one of the big issues you have with growing, you know, say like this whole field of hosta, you have just like a buffet for all kinds of pests. Um, so your best way to manage pests and apply chemicals the way you need to apply them um, is keeping track of data. Um, make it, making data-driven solutions is super duper important for um, effectively and cost effectively uh, managing pests. So here we have our sign-in page. Um, we can also go ahead and register a new guy. So we'll do, we'll say our name is Jimmy. Be Jimmy. Jimmy at example.com. And we can go ahead and associate ourselves with a facility. Right now it's just a drop down. So we'll go ahead and add ourselves to Green Valley. We'll register Jimmy. And then we can go in and we'll just say, all right, Jimmy. So here we are. This is our dashboard. So this is sort of uh, the meat of what I really wanted to do because tracking the data is awesome, but being able to visualize the data is super important. Um, so I use d3.js uh, library to create these charts. Um, if you are sort of monocropping, you have whole houses that have the same crop um, across the whole the whole floor space. It's really nice to be able to just go ahead and get a quick look. Um, if you have certain crops with certain pest issues, you can go ahead and see those based on, this will be like the past four weeks of data here. Um, so if you have a crop that's super susceptible to white flies, you can take a quick look here and see what your populations are doing. Say in house B, you have, you know, your starting poinsettias. White flies love poinsettias. Um, you might also have issues with fungus gnats because when you're propagating poinsettias, you have to keep it really moist, keep misting them. Um, so you can really keep track and see how um, your populations are trending, see what kind of pest management measures you need to take uh, into account. Um, from there, you can go into the pest management 
menu, you can see all of your pests. It comes preloaded with these five. If you want to add a new pest, say I have an issue with cutworms, and go ahead and add that in there. Um, we can also edit it. Say we want to make that singular instead of plural because we're just super anal. Now we have cutworm. Um, you also have the ability to build out your greenhouse. So when you start your facility, there's no data. Um, and there's no points to allow you to add data. So here I already have some example houses. But say you build a new greenhouse and we'll call that House C. So we'll add that house. Um, inside that house, you're going to have sort of a certain square footage area. Um, and that's what we would call a bay. So you can have a ton of bays in there. We'll just say, we'll add one bay. Um, and of course, we have all the same crud features. We can call it bay 12 if we want. And then inside of bay 12, there's going to be certain places in which we're going to keep um, insect population monitoring, sort of, uh, generally speaking, it's going to be like a sticky card. So insects are going to fly around. And when we go to the front half of that bay, because we want to look at a certain square footage area, um, we'll be able to go ahead and add data for the front half. And then we'll do the same for the back half. And so we can go back to the bays. If we want to add more bays to this house. And we can go back to the houses if we want to more, add more houses to our facility. Um, from there, you can then add scouting data. So we'll go to the scouting uh, menu. We can go into the house list. Uh, we can go into house C. We're going to add data for our new bay. So we'll say everything's low this week. We'll go ahead and add all of that data in there. And so for this, I just selected like a low, medium, high. Um, I've done it in the past where you would count literally every single insect and you put in an actual count. I've done it where it's a scale of one to five. So that could definitely be um, a setting that you can change. Um, so now that we've added, we could see that it's populated here. We can make edits say we mistakenly didn't, you know, we just put low for everything, but actually there's mediums. So we'll submit that edit. And you go back, you see it's reflected there. Um, we do have the ability to prevent duplicate um, additions of data. And then of course, if you want to dump the data, say you have an assistant that just like was not looking that day, just go ahead and dump that data. You don't have to worry about it. Um, and then beyond the dashboard, what I really wanted to be able to do um, for my sort of proof of concept here was be able to kind of dig into specific pests versus specific time frames. Um, you can select bays, you can select, you know, the specific halves of the bays if you'd like. Or if you're monocropping, you can just view general trends throughout your entire house. Um, so if, you know, how say it looks like things are trending right, but I want to look more specifically at bay one. Okay, there's a hidden issue. We're starting to trend upwards with spider mites. Might want to keep an eye on that. Where might that be an issue? So front half looks like it's, and back half looks like it's having the same issue. So generally speaking, you might want to look at the crop in bay one. We can look at bay two, see if there's any issues here. It looks like maybe we applied some chemicals in this zone and it's starting to take effect, which is awesome. And you can dig a little further and see that both halves, things are trending in the right way. And then you can, of course, clear it. And we'll just look at, let's look at white flies. And same deal. You can change, you know, your time frame. You can change your pest and really dig into the info and see what uh, your next steps are. And of course, this is all about, we want to make the growing process as efficient as possible. And, um, of course, all of your inputs, you want to minimize any kind of chemical input. So this was this is kind of the whole idea um, and is certainly a much better solution than an Excel spreadsheet, which we've used in the past. So uh, that's Field Scout, guys. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now.
Uh, like Ben, I'm also an avid gym goer. Um, so I like to keep track of my, my data as I'm working out. I currently keep things in a notebook, but I've tried using different apps that were available on the app store. Uh, but a lot of those had basic features hidden behind paywalls. And so I decided to create the easiest solution to my problem and just make my own. So this is Trainer, a fitness tracking app with an AI personal trainer built in using the OpenAI uh, ChatGPT feature. So I'm going to start. Here's my cat, by the way. She's being uh, a bit of a bother. Uh, I'm going to start by logging in as an existing user. So here we log in. This is our home page. Uh, it welcomes the user and gives them some different options on where to start. And so we're going to begin by going to exercises. So exercises are exclusive to the user. So one bench press for me won't be the same bench press for somebody else. But we can see that these exercises are categorized by what muscle group they target. Uh, and we can see that currently we don't have any for legs. We're going to go up here and add our own. We're going to add legs. Calls it squats, create exercise, we can go to legs, and we can see that that's been added. We can also edit this. I want it to be uppercase so it looks nice. We can save it. And then if we ever want to remove an exercise, we can do that as well by just clicking on the trash can. It's going to ask us to confirm that we want to delete this because it'll remove it from any workout playlist that it's attached to and also any progress attached to that exercise. Uh, so we do want to confirm that we want to delete this, and we can see that it is no longer there. When we go to workouts, workouts are essentially playlists comprised of exercises that are, again, unique to the user. So we can see that this user already has some built in, but let's go ahead and add our own. We can call this new workout. Let's add our squats in. We can click create new workout. We can see that that's reflected there. If you want to edit it, either rename it or add some other ones, we can do that. Um, let's add bench press. Oh, I accidentally clicked too many curls. We can always remove that at any time. Click Save Workout, and we can see that that is updated. When you're ready to actually perform a workout, you can come down here and click the Start Workout button. It's going to bring you to a new form for you to uh, input all the relevant information, your sets, your repetitions, your weight, the weight type, whether it's in pounds or kilograms, and then there's an optional field for notes if you have any additional information that you want to save. You can see at the top of the screen here, we have the recommendations option. If we click on this, this is going to bring up uh, some recommendations that trainer can give you based on what your, your fitness goals are. Um, so, for example, if you're wanting to train strength, you're going to do heavier weight but less sets and uh, or more sets, but less repetitions. And so this will calculate uh, some recommendations based off of the last time you performed this exercise. So for example, we can click on strength and we can see for curls, it gives us that information and it does for bench press. You will notice that it doesn't give that information for squats because squats was just created. So it has no information to pull, to pull from to actually give you those recommendations, but that's all right. We can go ahead and fill this out. Four sets, 12 reps, 165. We will make it uh, pounds. All of this is saved. Um, it is worth noting that these uh, inputs can't go uh, below zero. And there's also no decimals allowed just so that it doesn't cause any problems with the database or when it's making those calculations in the future. We can click finish workout. Oh, I forgot to select an input. It's going to have me fill that out. We finish workout and it says that our progress is saved. We can verify this. We can go to exercise. Uh, we can click on this graph button where it says progress and it will visually graph your information. We can see that on 1028, we did 210 pounds. And you can see that it gives you every time you've performed this exercise with the date and the relevant information. All these can be edited or deleted. Say we want to delete this. Uh, again, it's going to confirm that we want it to be deleted. And then, boom, it updates. And we can see that the last time this exercise was performed was on the 17th. Now, if you're like me and you like already keep all your information in either a notebook or like uh, uh, the notes app and you want to add a progress update, you can do that manually in here. Uh, just say this is 150 so it looks different. And then we can say that we did this yesterday. Click save and we can see that that updates there as well. So now I'm going to log out and show you what it's like for a new user. 
as soon as it decides to cooperate. There we go. So when you're a new user, you can register. Uh, first, let's try creating Jane Doe again. Two, three, I'm gonna click register. It says that username's taken, so it doesn't confuse the database. It's not gonna let us create a user with the same username. We'll say Sarah, cause she told me she wants to be a bodybuilder. It tells us that that user's creative. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and log in. Sarah, I see you shaking your head. I I, I thought that's what you told me. Uh, we'll log in. It welcomes the user. Uh, and so uh, a cool thing that Trainer does is the first time that you log into your app, uh, it is going to give a beginner workout and exercises for you just to give you a place to start so you're not starting from uh, uh, complete zero. We can also go over to Profile. We can add information. Uh, Sarah is 50, she is 4'6", and uh, she weighs, I'm not gonna be mean on this one, she weighs 120, we're gonna click save, uh, and it'll save that information, but then it'll also calculate um, uh, your recommended daily calories based on your gender, the information we put in, and your activity level, and that will also update if we change this. So if we change this to be five foot, uh, you see that that's get updated as well. And the last part of my app that I want to showcase is the AI chat feature. So this has ChatGPT integration. So this will talk to the ChatGPT API, uh, basically to act as a, a personal trainer for people who are new to the gym and just starting to work out and don't really know where to begin. So you can interact with it like a normal ChatGPT chatbot, but then we can also have it create workouts for us. Just going to give it a moment. So here we go. It returns a workout. We have the different exercises, the weights it recommends. And then here at the bottom, it asks us for confirmation that we want it to create this workout for us. So if we type in create this workout, we can click send. We can see that workout's created. We can verify this. We can see beginner full body workout. And we can see all of those exercises have been created and are already in this workout playlist for us. Um, and it is worth noting that we already had bench press existed. So it didn't create a new exercise called bench press. It just went ahead and used the one that we already have. And then the very last thing is if you think the formatting looks a little weird, well, that is because it is designed for mobile use. So uh, my next step is uh, working on getting this onto both the Apple and Android app stores so then people can actually start using it. And that is Trainer. Are there any questions? There's one in the chat that says, have you considered a featured account in increments of 45? And since I love the gym, I know what that means. Uh. Not something that I consider, but it's definitely something that would be good to have. Um, I kind of left it open-ended for right now because people like count their weight different ways. So for me, like when I'm doing bench press, when I like record my weight, it's based off of like how much is on one side of the bar. So it's easy for me to put the weight on and off and I don't have to do math of like, okay, so I'm lifting 130. So that's 65 a side. That needs to be one plate and then like two tens. So it just kind of depends on personal preference, but, um, but yeah, that's definitely something I will consider for the future. Hey, Sarah. Um, so the week before last, I know um, you didn't yet have the ability for the um, open AI to create the workout for you. How did you end up implementing mm -hmm. that? So, what I had thought originally is that I would need for the, the API to be able to talk directly to my database. I don't know why. I just thought like, oh, I need to like connect those two directly together. Uh, turns out you don't need to do that. So what it's doing is that when we go to gym, if I tell it to uh, create a workout or make a workout, it is looking for certain key phrases that is going to tell it, hey, this is when it wants you to actually create that workout. And so then uh, it's returning the information in a way that I've already designated like behind the scenes. So it's formatting it in a way that will be compatible with the database. 
And then once the user confirms, create this workout and be like, yes, I actually want you to do this. It's then going to map through that data and go ahead and create it in the database for you. Five stars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Seth. Well done. Okay. Hi, everyone. This is my full stack capstone application called Summit Soundstage. Summit Soundstage is an intuitive application designed for music lovers and event organizers. I built this app to provide an interactive web space for music venues that can also be modified to fit a wide range of business models and artist portfolios, which is work that I would like to continue doing into the future. Okay. And so... We begin on the home page, and at the top of the page, we have a carousel of images, and this allows the user to get an idea of what their sound experience is going to look like and showcase the venue. And then as we scroll down, we have the upcoming calendar events populating onto the home page to improve user accessibility and promote ticket sales. So a user is able to add tickets to the cart directly from this page. And if a user is curious about one of the artists or acts that's coming up, they have the option to click on the artist's name and it will pull up the band site so they can get some more information. And then scrolling down towards the bottom, we have a footer that has all of the contact information for the venue with active links, including um, any social medias that they wish to include. And so for this example, I just did a local venue in my town. And then going up to the navigation bar, if you select on the calendar, you can view all of the upcoming events on this page. And each card will have a picture of the artist, the artist's name, the supporting artist, price, and the date. And it's sorted by upcoming date. So that way the user is gonna see what's coming up and then it'll extend out to what is the furthest away. And you can also add tickets to your cart from here as well. And then to encourage sales and help the venue's business, there's also a merch section for the Summit Soundstage website. And this is where they can upload new merch for users to purchase. It has the item name, a picture of the item, the price, and then the description. You can add this to the cart. And then moving forward onto the Frequently Asked Questions page, which is probably the most important page on the site and why most people are going to be looking at your site. Um, I have embedded at the top of the page a Google Maps that is interactive. And you can insert your directions to help route yourself to the venue. And as you scroll down, there's an accordion of frequently asked questions, such as the parking, the bag policy, re-entry, if it's accessible. And then finally, the user will go to their checkout and they'll see that all of the items they've selected are in their checkout. So we have the ticket we selected, we have our merch item we selected, and you can go ahead and complete your purchase. And so that completes the user view. So I'm gonna go ahead and access the admin login. 
I'm going to log in with the administrative password that I have. Okay. And now that we are in here, you'll see that it looks almost identical. But now when we go on to the calendar page, you'll see buttons to edit or delete or create a new event. And then similar for merch, you have the same option. So let's go ahead and create a new merch item. So we'll call this possum shirt, put in a description. Okay. And then submit and you'll see that it has updated to your website. And if you wanna edit, so we can make this 20 instead of 10. Now it'll show that it's $20, or we can go ahead and delete it altogether if we don't feel like it's ready uh, to be uploaded to the site. So we can delete that. And that finishes the walkthrough of my website, Summit Soundstage. Thank you all for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Did I see Billy Strings on there somewhere? Yeah, I had to include him. I thought so. What was the hardest part? Um, I think that moving forward, making the checkout actually function would be the next step. I think just in terms of time, um, this being the first full stack project that I've done, I think the back end really took up the first week of the time and um, didn't really leave time for me to advance certain features, but I would definitely like to learn how to do that. And um, like I said, I wanna move forward either building websites for small businesses or um, artists. Like I'm really passionate about this sort of web design and just want to learn all that I can. What part did you have the most fun with? Oh, uh, definitely design. I like the design element and even just planning the website, like how you want it to look. Um, Similar to Fiona, I tried to use a couple of example websites to base off of um, and help kind of structure the layout. And I think that was a really useful tool and just kind of researching all the different websites was really fun. And here we go. So my name is Mike. Um, I've been a photographer since I was 15 years old. So as you can see from my white beard, that was just three years ago. Um, I've found that with a lot of this stuff that you're seeing here on the screen right now, this is Amazon's photo sharing app. Um, it kind of exists as a walled garden. Um, if you want to actually look at your photos um, the kind of cohesively, as an example, if you click on this photo of this happy young couple, click on the information button here. I didn't design this, by the way, just in case you were wondering, although my work is similarly beautiful. Um, you'll see that you have your file info, date taken, and your device info. That's all the information that um, Amazon is going to collect. Um, the same thing with um, Dropbox, Google Photos, things like that. And if you look at this photo here of me when I was a young man, I just wanted to show that I used to have hair and uh, hope in my eyes. You can look at the information here and you'll see that it is pretty basic. It doesn't include half the stuff you need. It's not going to have your device info, where it's captured, or even more importantly, where your negatives are held. So I solved that with this prototype of this very, very simple site. It's called Archives Maps. Um, you can log into it, but it's never going to really be shared um, anywhere else. I think I really wanted to include that basically so that you could sign into this and um, go uh, 
across like different devices, like whether you're using your cell phone, tablet, whatever, but you can look at your latest entries and you'll have your uh, capture data, resolution, file size, cameras, all that, locations, uh, tags, but you'll also have where your physical backups are, which is where I think this actually has a lot of um, extra and very, very needed functionality. I can see that I've got this on one master drive where I've got several thousand images, another external drive, you want to have it in two separate physical spaces and also have it, of course, stored in the cloud under this file name here. Um, you can look at the add new entry uh, form if you want to. It's pretty bare bones. Um, I've included a list of cameras that I've used just so I'll actually have that data to pull from. Get your tag list. You can create your tags, create your locations. It's all pretty much the same. Um, but where it really starts to shine is when you type in your search. So I could type in Sarah. I'll see all the different photos I've got of Sarah. And I've carefully prepared my files here so I can find the one that I like the best. You can pretend that I pulled it out of there. But you can see if I would ever want to find this photo, I would just punch in file name. And there she is. Very happy that I was bombarding her and everyone else with a camera at uh, Professional Development Day. Got some of Casey as well, if you'd like to see that, you can bring it back. Um, if you want to go into the search menu again and look for photos of shot in bars, it's shot a lot of bands. You can see all the different photos, the different dates. I thought it would be important to actually include the capture date for a lot of these because depending on when you actually shot these, um, you'll actually know kind of who's gonna be in them or what you've actually captured. Um, in my opinion, um, really the most important thing that kind of distinguishes this from anything else is always going to be where you can find your physical media and where that's being held. Um, but if you want to go back and find your favorite bar photo, again, you would search here, find the one you like, go through to your host of choice, post it right in there. So my aunt smoking a cigarette in the bar, which you can't do anymore. So that shows you how old I am, in fact. And then the other one would be um, the most important picture. The only reason that I actually um, designed this app completely is um, cats. You can look up cats and all the different cat photos you've got. I carefully selected one of those. And we paste it in here. Oops. And you would see your cat photo. This cat is actually available for adoption. I'm taking him to the vet tomorrow. He's going to be given a clean bill of health. And I would probably drive him pretty much anywhere in West Virginia if you would want to take him. He's a really good boy. But basically, um, the site right now kind of exists in a, a prototype form. You can see that we've got 77,000 edited photos um, stored in the cloud. And usually whenever you do these sorts of um, the sort of work that I do, it'll generate a lot of uh, information. Um, when I was actually starting this, I was conceptualizing having some kind of scraper so that I could actually put the raw data from Lightroom um, in a giant file and um, force something to go through it and kind of organize all that myself. Um, that is not in fact something that I'm able to do yet. But um, eventually I could see this um, being very, very useful, um, especially with like the resurgence of film photography where a lot of people are going to absolutely be creating physical media that they hope to share digitally online. Um, and eventually, hopefully somebody will, will buy this wonderful idea, you know, so if you, if you know anyone. But uh, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Oh, somebody want to know like how to get the cat? Easy, you can Slack me. It's um, very, very simple. I will absolutely bring him to you. So lock in your uh, chance to get a very, very nice cat for October. Thanks, Rev. I appreciate that. Thanks. Thanks, Anaya.
I feel like any feedback is basically you guys asking to be put on the wait list for the cat. So prepare for your messages. So welcome to my little blog called Fauna Focus. Um, basically, I just want th this is like a little thing users can log into to post pictures and stories they've had with animals out in the wild and different encounters. Basically, just want it to be a way for users to be more aware of the wilderness that surrounds them and to bring more people together with, well, animals. <laughs> So with this, um, you can log in this is your email if you don't have an account yet, and we can get logged in here, which I have some fun info. Just enter the room. It's definitely be good. Alrighty, register, and then we should be able to just log in with the email we just did. Alrighty, so once you're logged in, you'll be directed to the home page, but just has some fun facts about animals such as black fitted ferrets, which are very chatty and adorable, and lions being professional cat nappers. Uh, if you do want to know more fun facts, of course, got a little link here. I also have other links um, about helpful resources, with different blogs, some of which are not here in America, such as convers the conversation, I cannot speak, conservation in South Africa. And then I also have a page here for links to different books for all ages, not just adults. There's also some for kids, such as a fascinating animal book. Well, after you log in here, you can go to posts and view posts everyone has already made, such as this one by Ash. You can see the post, a cute little grasshopper mouse that is slightly aggressive, but still adorable. Um, you can filter them by category. So if you want to see all the mammal posts, you have those two, of course, still by Ash. Say you want to see a reptile. Well, it's not currently available. If you don't want to do category, you want to do by user instead. So let's say where Ash posts a lot and you really like theirs, you can just search by them. If you don't want to do that either, we also have locations. So say recently you went to Antelope. Canon in Arizona, and you want to see if there's any posts about that? Well, we have two here by Ash and Kelsey. So, that you can either send that, view all posts, or create your own, which this I have some fun little information for. Mm -hmm. Since we recently went to Arizona, I'll just put the end there. And then we'll say, we'll put this image in here. We want to show up the tourists that we found. But, uh-oh, it's not the correct format. So instead, let's grab this one. There we go. Little air went away. And since it is a tortoise, we'll put a reptile. Add post, and there's our sweet little baby there. Now, since um, I have this post, I can get rid of it and delete it. But if I didn't want to do that, I do see that I did a little spelling errors we can go back in here and edit that again just add my little in there edit and there we go and now it says canyon from there you can go to my post for all posts there's my post there's just this one go back to all and then you can view it all again this is mainly just for pictures and a brief description plus the date now, if you wanted just stories or fun experiences, people have with encounters, we'd go to that tab and we'd see the bunch here. So let's see, we can do mouse encounter, which was by Ash. See the description, I saw the cutest little mouse laying home, but then it tried to attack him. You know, that's that's never fun. Um, you can do basically exact same thing. Uh-oh, we have to edit, have them update that later. Category, you can also just, if you want to do, let's say fish. Well, there's a little shark cage diving. If you didn't want to do that, you could do it by user. We can do ash again, which has a bird and reptile, which you need to change. And then from there, you can also create your own story. So let's see, where we did one for, going to Anlo Canyon. Full description here, or title. 
Let me select experience. Since we were out in the canyons, we can add that. So everyone needs to check this out because it is a beautiful place. Go to my stories, there it pops up. If you decide, you know what? Nah, I don't want people to know this happened. Just go delete, confirmed. It is no longer there. And if you want to do the same with your post, say, you know what? I don't feel like sharing my tortoise. That's my tortoise. You just delete it, confirm, and it is gone. With that, that is my little post that I have. You, after you're done, just log out and you're brought back to your little welcome page. Thank you for listening and I'm open to questions. What was the hardest part about getting it all to work as you wanted it to? The hardest part actually fortunately was uh, making sure my fetch calls are correct. I kept typing out funky ones for whatever reason and the lovely Sarah had to keep correcting me <laughs> on uh, not to put the parameters in there multiple times. So that ended up being the hardest part. <laughs> Okay. My name is Chelsea, and for my Full Stop Capstone, I did a recipe sharing app, um, and I called it the Confectioner's Cloud. Um, so from here, you'll be brought to your login screen. Um, the So you can either log in. We can also register as a new user, but for today, we're just going to um, use an existing user. Um, so we first log in, it just brings you to like a little welcome, um, cute page. The main uh, uses of the app are to see recipes that all of the users have posted. So it brings you to um, our recipe list app or um, page, and you can scroll through and see what looks good, anything catching your eye. You can also search. Um, you can search by... Um, anything within the title. Um, so anything, what it would be called. We can also search by um, flavor. So each recipe is gonna have a flavor and a category attached to them. So we can do it by that. It'll show us those. Um, we can do it by um, the type and we can also do it um, with both together if there's like something specific that you're interested in. Um, so from here, we can click on any of the titles. It'll bring us to like a little details page, which will include the ingredients and the directions. Um, and from here, we can go back home. We can also look at the reviews. Um, so this will let us know what any um, user thinks about your um, or any particular recipe. So you can read those. Um, we'll be able to add... Submit. It'll show us here. It is going to um, show us by date. We can edit that. And it'll show us our change. And if we realize like, hey, we already actually um, commented on this. We don't really need a second one. We'll go ahead and delete that. Um, from here, you can click on here. It'll bring you back to your um, uh, details page. You can also hit the home button. From here, we have our profile page. It'll show you your um, image, your username, and your uh, full name. Um, you're, you'll be able to edit your profile if you want to. The other useful thing for your profile page is gonna be your recipes. Um, these are all of the recipes that you as a user have posted. So you'll be able to add a recipe. You'll be able to edit and delete. So we're gonna add a new one. We're going to choose miscellaneous, and this is a frozen um, dessert submit. And it's going to bring us back to our um, page and with our new submission. Um, so to make sure everything worked the way we want it to, we're going to click this. Um, it's going to bring us to our recipe page, which it gives us our details. Looks good. We're going to have no reviews for this one yet. I've returned home. 
our new recipe is going to uh, jump to the front of the list so everybody will be able to see the newest submission. Um, if we're going to go back to our recipes, we're actually going to edit that. We're like, hey, that was actually called frozen. And there is our change. And then we decided that we do not need that anymore. It is going to go away from our list and it takes it out of um, the view of others as well. So that is my app that I created. Are there any questions? Um, how many of how many of those aspects of the visuals did you design yourself? Um, most of them, I guess, like definitely all the headers and the backgrounds. Um, I used Canva.